Hey friends, today we are working on a 2013 Dodge Dart, and I think they're all pretty much the same for this generation, up until 15, 16, 17, I don't even know when they stopped, but I know from 13 on up. But what we're doing today is changing the hub assembly. Now as you can see, I'm well on the way already, but I figured it might make it a little easier for you folks to see what, what I've started on already. So, start off with, of course, you need... Uh, well, a torque wrench to tighten them down, but so, you know I, I use it to break them loose. Some people say you shouldn't. I do. 19 millimeter short starting start extension, just a basic Mastercraft tool set. I make sure to set it on zero before I break anything loose with it. So 19 millimeter for your lugs, which is they're kind of a pain because they're the chrome capped ones. Sometimes it's hard to get a, a socket on there, but it's all kind of European design now anyway, being under see it or partially. And then. Once you get the wheel off, I guess the next step would be to break your, or to take your caliper off, because you got to get that off for the hub assembly. So that's right there, one of the brake pads is removed. And to do that, you will need to remove this stupid little set screw, if yours has it. And that is a 5 millimeter Allen wrench, is what I use. Works just fine. I've had to drill them out in the past, but this one came out fairly easy. And then, to take your calipers off, your caliper bolts are an 11 millimeter. Now, I only use this wobbler for the hub assembly, because it's the same size bolts, if I remember correctly. But anyway, uh, actually, no, these aren't for your hub assembly. I can't even remember now, but, but yeah, so those are actually your hub, those are your bearing bolts there. They're an 11 millimeter. And then your, your, actual, your actual caliper bolts, they have an odd re inverse torx, I guess they call it, design. But these are, I think, a 16 millimeter, as you can see there. So you use a 16 millimeter to break loose the caliper from here. It's bolted onto that. So that's a 16 millimeter. And then after you do that, I, I went ahead and I removed the tie rod as well. But I might not have had to do that. I was going to remove the tie rod and pop the control arm off on the bottom. You want to see how to do that there's that bolt and i loosened it but it's a pain to get that thing out so what i went ahead and tried to do is just remove the hub the new hub wheel bearing or the old one out and then just pop the new one in onto the shaft that way i don't have to remove the cv shaft but to get that out the axle you need a one and seven sixteenths and of course a big old ratchet Three quarter inch, I believe is what they call that. In my tool set over there. And I use this to try to get that hub out. It is a pain, let me tell you. That's a pain to get it out. If you do decide to take the tie rod off, this is what it is. It's an 18 millimeter socket. I ended up having to use a rat a ratchet, and I tried getting a, a pipe wrench in there somewhere. I know it's not good for them, but it just wanted to spin. You know, it was just spinning along with me loosening it so that was a pain i tried to get a wrench on there and then ultimately up here to to get it out once i could jam it in there but again you might not even have had to remove that you could try leaving it on it'll just make it a lot more difficult to wiggle this back and forth but anyway as you can see i'm just getting the old hub out now and it's kind of a pain as you can see i've got it out quite a ways it's about to pop out i believe but just kind of giving you guys the rundown on the tools at first this is very handy to have is an imp as an impact i use that for everything actually i pop my 19 on there once i broke them loose and, and take it out it's just a lot simpler that way and then this is your sensor you want to make dang sure you take your abs speed sensor out before you start taking that out i don't know if it would do any damage if you didn't but i wouldn't be surprised if it did so that's right in there and that is a 10 millimeter which is what i have on my impact right now i popped that loose with that and i believe that pretty much tells you about your tools that you'll need that's pretty basic basically I mean if you've got a basic socket set and then of course the more complex tools you might need would be torque wrench which is pretty basic as well and then of course this is the one that not everybody might have but again a 1 and 7 16 and a ratchet to break it loose they use an interesting design that just pops into these grooves here as you can see so they don't need a special pin pulled out or anything. They're pretty easy to get off. But I'm going to...
pause it here now, see if I can get this one out the rest of the way, and then I'll I'll continue. Oh, is it recording again? Yep. Okay, so let me get them closer here. As you can see, I've been popping this out slowly. Initially, I just whack it with a hammer on opposing sides until it starts to loosen. And I kind of had to do that for a while. You can come right to this side here again. And then I eventually just get in there with that one, and it pops out. So now I'm going to straighten that out just to where it's kind of at a balance point. And then here's your old hub, which I'm not even convinced that it was shot. It's very, very tight, but it does sound kind of dry. So I'll hold on to it anyway. If it doesn't fix the problem, then I know that this this is not the problem. And uh, for the record, I don't even, I didn't even tell you what the problem was. This one had all kinds of humming noises when you were driving, just a terrible, like especially at lower speeds, it was almost like a grinding, just brr, 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 brr. I mean, you could hear it coming in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this up and coat it with some grease and try to get this new hub in here as smooth as possible and put it all back together and hopefully it fixes the problem we're going to do the same on the other side maybe it takes more than just one so i go ahead i clean that up a little bit probably should have done a better job but i'm kind of in a hurry so anyway i coat that with some grease and uh, get that all in there just to hopefully not have the same problem in the future and maybe get it in a little easier as well and then I went ahead and I used like a brake cleaner or a carb cleaner or whatever works well to clean up oops I got some in that temper hole there to clean up that the twine here because obviously cleaning this up you get all that dirt and stuff in there and I'm gonna go ahead and grease these as well get some on there just to hopefully make it a little easier ahead, get some of that on there as well and then put it inside a rag here but i don't now we got to try to get this one on and make sure it's the right side even that looks like it is what kind of look is that so, get that on there. Yeah. 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 Ye